welcome back to Tech Mimic, where you can simply view, imitate, replicate, and get on with your day. This video is a step-by-step -step instruction how to store your sensitive files into an encrypted container in Linux Mint. We won't be using the terminal or command line in this video, all will be demonstrated via the graphical user interface. The encrypted container looks like a regular file on the file system, but once you have unlocked the container, it presents itself and behaves like a USB drive, as you will see during the video. The starting point is this collection of top secret files. Two regular text files and one image. And these files I want to hide away in a virtual vault, like an encrypted container. And for this, we're going to use the utility Veracrypt, but Veracrypt is not available in the Linux Mint Software Manager. So we have to download it ourselves from Veracrypt's website at veracrypt.io, where it is explained that Veracrypt is free and open source disk encryption software, and it is available for Windows, macOS, and Linux. Then the main features are highlighted. There are many things that you can do with Veracrypt, but for today's purpose, we are interested in the top bullet point because we want to create a virtual encrypted disk within a file that we can then mount like it is a real disk. It can also be used to encrypt an entire USB drive. And in the event that you are interested in a video how to encrypt an entire removable USB drive with just native Linux utilities, so without the use of Veracrypt, there is a link in the description for your convenience. Now let's download Veracrypt. And for this, click the Downloads button and locate the Linux downloads, where there are many different download options available, and this might be a little bit confusing. There are basically two methods to use Veracrypt. You can determine the installation method you want for Veracrypt based on convenience and also how secretive you want to be. Because by not having Veracrypt installed on the same system where the encrypted container resides, things will become much less obvious. The first method is via the so-called app image, which is a portable application, meaning that you don't have to install anything. Let me show you this method first. Download the app image for x64, and then locate the downloaded file in the file manager. Most of the times, this will just be the downloads folder. But then when you double click the Veracrypt app image file, nothing happens, because by default, downloaded applications are not allowed to be executed. There is an easy fix for this, so right click, select properties, and then permissions. And from there enable allow executing file as program, and click close. And that's all you had to do. Now you can start Veracrypt as a portable application by double clicking on the app image file. Nothing had to be installed. This will also mean that Veracrypt is not added to the menu structure at this point, because that's something you will have to do yourself with a portable application. Let's close Veracrypt for now, so I can explain the second method that is just to install Veracrypt like any regular Linux application. Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, which in turn is based on Debian. But ignore all that, just focus on Ubuntu. And at the time of the recording of this video, there are downloads available for Ubuntu 2504, 2404, 2204 and 20.04. So which one do you have to use? The answer can easily be located by opening the menu and then click Administration, System Reports. By the way, it is also just one command from the terminal, but I promised before that in this video we will do everything through the graphical user interface. Once the System Reports application is loaded, click System Information on the left, and you will find your Linux distro. In this case, Linux Mint 22.1 Xia, which has a base of Ubuntu 24.04 Noble. Guarded with this knowledge, go back to the Veracrypt downloads, and download the GUI packets for Ubuntu 24.04. Once done, close the browser. And to install the Veracrypt.deb packets, simply double-clicking it will start the package manager, where you can click on Install Packets. Then provide your password and Veracrypt will be installed. After a few seconds, the message, the installation was successful, appears. Close this window, 
and you will now be able to start VeraCrypt like any other application from the menu. It is located under Accessories. And if you find this convenient, you can right-click VeraCrypt and select Add to Panel. Start VeraCrypt and click Create Volume and then leave the default option of Create an encrypted file container and click Next. In this video, we will use a standard VeraCrypt volume. The contents of the container will become visible after providing the encryption key, as you will see later. A follow up video will demonstrate how to use a hidden VeraCrypt volume, which is effectively another layer of encryption within an already encrypted file container, but ignore that for now. Select Standard VeraCrypt Volume and click Next. Now you have to specify the location of the encrypted file container that we are creating, which presents itself as a regular file on the file system. Click Select File and browse to the required location and specify a file name. In this example, and for demonstration purposes, I will use the same location as the top secret files, so the Documents folder, but of course you might want to specify a completely different location. Let me also call it secret underscore container, but I am certain that you can do much better if you want to hide something. You can also select never save history, so that every time you use the VeraCrypt application, you would have to specify everything again, but at least there are no traces visible from the last session that could contain clues to the existence and whereabouts of the secret container. Click next. In this screen, you can specify encryption options, like the encryption algorithm, and has algorithm used. I will skip all of this, you can learn more about it by clicking on the blue links. But the defaults of AES encryption and hashing with SHA or SHA-512 are already very secure. So click next. Now you will have to specify the size of the encrypted file container. And I can only say to make this big enough to allow for existing and current top secret files. I will just go for five gigabytes in this example. The free space available will list how big you can make your encrypted file container, or you can use the Use All Available Free Space option. And in my test machine, I only have a very small hard disk, as you can tell with the free space available of just under 12 gigabytes. Once happy, click Next. Now specify the volume password, aka the encryption password, twice. Read the message at the bottom and choose a solid password. Many more options like key files are available, but this is a basic tutorial, so just provide the password twice and click Next. Then you get asked if you intend to store files larger than 4 GB in the encrypted file container. Just select yes or no, it doesn't really matter, because in the next step the correct selection will be automatically made for you. You can always adjust this if you need to, but to be on the safe side, maybe just select that you want to work with large files. I will go with no large files, and it will propose a file system of FAT. Click Next. Now this is something special, because VeraCrypt wants you to move your mouse pointer as randomly as possible within the window. And the longer you move it, the better, because this will increase the cryptographic strength of the encryption keys. You can select display pool content while moving the mouse. Do this for as long as you can or want, and then click Format. Depending on the encryption strength and size of your encrypted file container, this can take a while, so time to go get some coffee. Eventually, the encryption will be finished and the message, the VeraCrypt volume has been successfully created, appears. Click OK. Now you can create additional volumes by clicking Next, but I'm happy with just the one, so let me click Abort. Let's locate the encrypted file container on the file system and check its properties. The type is binary, and this is the size it has configured after specifying 5 GB. And when you double click it, Linux Mint reports an unknown file type and is asking you to choose a program to open it with. To hide VeraCrypt away and to not make it too obvious what this file is, just cancel out of this, because this is not how you want to access the container. What I want to do now is to place my top secret files into the container. For this, open or go back to VeraCrypt and select any empty slot from the list. 
then click Select File and browse to the secret container and double click it. The path to the volume is shown and as mentioned earlier, you can select Never Save History to not leave any traces for when you start Veracrypt the next time. Now click Mount and provide the password you have specified earlier and click OK. Now there is a second password dialog, but this one is to mount the volume to the Linux Mint system, and for that, administrator privileges are required. So specify your Linux Mint password. And if both passwords are correct, after a few seconds, the encrypted container is mounted and a file manager window is opened. And this is exactly the same behavior as you would see when you connect a USB drive to your Linux Mint system. The container, once decrypted and mounted, is acting like any removable media. And by default, the mount point is forward slash media forward slash veracrypt1. Now I will cut the top secret files for my documents directory and paste them into the container. They are now gone and no longer visible in the documents directory, and they now live inside the container. Once you are done, in Veracrypt, select the slot where the container is mounted and click Unmount, or don't select anything and simply click Unmount All. The container is no longer attached and it has disappeared from the file manager. Now you can close Veracrypt. The container file is a self-contained file and from the outside, of course, you cannot see its contents. You can move this file anywhere you want, it doesn't have to stay in the same directory. When it is time to access its contents, just start Veracrypt, click Select File, locate the container, or use the history if you want. Now click Mount and provide the encryption password. And then the Linux Mint administrative password. Of course, you can interact with the files by opening and editing the files directly in the encrypted volume, and the changes will be persistent after we dismount and mount. Any changes you made will be there the next time. This is assuming that you still know the current password, but you want to change it. Open Veracrypt, click Select File, and locate the container or in this example, the path is already specified based on the history. Then select the Volume Tools and Change Volume Password. Then specify the current password and the new password twice. And click OK. Now do the mouse jiggly dance thing again until satisfied and click continue and maybe get some more coffee. Once done, the dialog will inform you that the password was successfully changed and you can click OK. If you now try to mount the container and specify the old password on purpose, it will fail. and the new password will mount the container without problems. That's it. Hope it helped. And if it did, please like the video and keep it up. Until next time, bye.